In this video, we will see how Docker containers communicate in a standalone bridge network. In the diagram, we have a host in which the Docker engine is installed. When we install the Docker engine and the Docker engine is up and running, by default, a standalone bridge network will be created. Here, this bridge will be connected to the Ethernet interface of the host. We can also create user defined bridge networks. So, when we create a container, if we don't specify any bridge network name, then they will be connected to the corresponding default bridge network. If we specify a name of the bridge network, and this container will be connected to corresponding bridge network. And when a container is created, a virtual Ethernet interface will be attached to the container using which it will be connected to the bridge. So, here we can see all the containers are having different virtual Ethernet interface using which they are connected to the bridge network. So, in this video, we will see how the container to container communication happens and also how the communication from this container to the external world and also how we can reach the applications which are running inside the containers from the external world. As I said earlier, we have two types of bridge networks. Either we can use the default bridge network or we can create a custom user defined bridge network and we can attach corresponding containers to the custom network. So now, if this container wants to communicate with this container, then the communication happens via this virtual Ethernet interface to the bridge and from here the packets will be sent to the virtual Ethernet interface of the second container. And if this container wants to connect to the external world, the packets will be sent to the bridge via this virtual Ethernet interface. From here, the actual Ethernet interface of the host from there to the external world. And if you want to access the applications which are running inside the container from external world, then we have to map the port of this container to the external world because we cannot directly access this IP address from the external world. We can access the host IP address but not the IP address of the container directly. And also there is a small difference between this default bridge network and user defined bridge network with respect to DNS. If one container wants to communicate with another container, so they can communicate with the DNS name of the second container if we use the user defined bridge network. But if we use the default bridge network, the containers cannot communicate with each other using the DNS. In that case, they have to communicate with the IP addresses. Now, let us see all these cases via hands on. Let us start. So, this is the Linux terminal. Let us start with default Docker network. So, when we install Docker and Docker is up and running, by default, a Docker default network will be created. We can check that using Docker network command. Here, we can see that there is a default bridge network. And also we can see there is a default host network and non network. But for this video, we will go through the bridge network. We can also see there is a default interface which will be created in this system. Here we can see that there is a default interface for this bridge, which is Docker 0. Now let us start some containers in this default network. And also we will see how the communication between containers, etc. So let me start a Nginx container. Here I am giving the name as container1 and the image name is nginx. So this will start a container with nginx image. So since we are not specifying any network here, so by default this will be connected to default bridge network. So let us enter. So the container is created. Now let us verify with docker ps. We can see the container is up and running. So as I said earlier, when we create a container, it should create a virtual Ethernet interface. We can check that using IP address command. Here we can see that there is a new virtual Ethernet interface created for this container. We can also inspect the Docker bridge network. So this is the subnet of default bridge network. And this is the gateway IP address. And we can see that there is a new container which is attached to the default bridge network. So, this is the IP address of the new container. Now, let us create a new container. So, for that also it will create a new virtual Ethernet interface and also it will be attached to the default bridge network. So, let us do that. So, here I am giving the name as container 2. So, we can verify with docker ps. Now, both the containers are running. Now, we can inspect the default bridge network again. Now we can see that two containers are attached to the same default bridge network. 
So this way, when we don't specify any network, when we create a new container, they will be attached to the default bridge network. So now let us see the communication between both the containers. Now let me log into the first container. So now we are in the first container. Now let us try to reach the second container using the IP address. So for that, let me use curl. So this is the IP address. So let me copy. So by default, Nginx runs on 80 port. So let us access using port 80. Now we can get the Nginx page of the second container. So this way we can access the second container using the IP address. Now let us try to do the same using the DNS name. So here the name is container2. So if we access using the DNS name in the default bridge network, we should not be able to access. So let us try this. It could not resolve the host container2. So this means we cannot access one container from another container using DNS resolution in the default bridge network. So now let us try to access the external application. So for this we can use the example application. So for that we can use the same call command here example.com. This example.com is an example application which is hosted in internet. So let us try to access. So now we can see that we are able to access the application which is hosted in internet from the container. Now we have seen how the communication happens from one container to another container. And also we have seen how we can access an external application within the container. Now let us try to access the application which is running inside the container. So let us try to use docker ps. So here we have two containers running on port 80 within the container. So to access this application, we need to expose this port to the outside world. And also we need to map this port. So by default, nginx will expose the port on port 80. So here we did not have any port mapping. Let us check whether the ports of container 1 is mapped. So for that we can use docker port and the container name. So we did not map this port. Same for container 2 as well. So if you want to map these ports of a running container, then we need to change the IP tables. So here I am not doing that. So to explain this mapping of the ports, so let me create a new container. Here I will give name container 3. So here we have to use IFMP. So we have to provide the port. This means the port 80 of the container is mapped to 8080 on the host side. So now a new content is created. Let us verify using Docker PS. So now we can see that port mapping has been done. And also we can verify with Docker port command as well. Now we can access the application using 88 port. So now we can see that the Nginx is accessible from outside on port 8080. So this way to access the application within a container, there are two things to be done. One is the container should expose the application on a particular port. And second thing is we need to map the port to the external world. So if you are writing any Docker file and if you want to expose the application on a particular port, then we have to use expose command within the Docker file. So till now we have created the containers etc in the default bridge network. So now let us try to create a user defined network and we will try to create containers and we will attach them to the custom network. And let us see how the communication happens in the custom network. So to create a custom network I will use docker network command. Here I will give my network. A new network is created. We can verify with docker network ls command. Now we can see that a new network called my network which is of bridge type is created. So we can inspect this network. So it is allocated a subnet of 172.18.0.0. So as of now it has no containers. Now let us try to create new containers and we will specify this network as part of the creation instead of the default network. Here the name of the container is my container one and we have to specify the network here. So for that we have to use iPhone iPhone net and this should use the my network and the name of the image is nginx. Similarly we can create another container. So now we have two new containers. Let us verify with docker ps command. 
So now we have two new containers. So now let us inspect this my network. So here we can see that the two new containers are added to my network. So now let us try to check the communication between these two containers. So let me connect to the first container. Now I am in the my container one. So let us try to access the second container using curl command. So on port 80. So now we are able to access the second container from the first container. We can also try accessing using the name instead of IP address. Now we can see that we are able to access the nginx space using the DNS name instead of IP address as well. So this means we are able to access one container from another container using name as well as IP address when we use custom networks. So we can also try accessing the external applications here. So we are able to access the external application which is hosted in the internet from the container. So let me exit from this container. So if you want to access the application running inside this container, we have to expose the port as well as we have to do port mapping as we did in the default bridge network. So in this video, we have seen how the communication happens between containers in a standalone bridge network using both default network and user defined network. I hope this video is helpful. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching.